and welcome to another Win Daily Show. My name is Michael Raziel, and we are going to be talking about the 729 NBA slate. It is back. We're here to chat about it with you. Jason Mizrahi is my wonderful, wonderful guest. So I appreciate that guy. You, Jason, how excited are you that NBA is coming back tomorrow? Pretty excited. I had a bad slate with MLB right now, so I get to put this one in the bed and start fresh with NBA. So I'm super excited about that. I got a million dollars on both sides, DraftKings and FanDuel. So there's a lot of unknown. Like I was preparing to go ahead and start building labs on Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday. And then when I started seeing all this news popping up, it made no sense to even attempt to make a lineup because if you made a lineup already, it's pretty much dead in the water because there's no way you made a lineup that is injury free or strip, strip club, club free, free, whatever right. you want to call it. It's there are a lot of these dead lineups out there right now. So you gotta go ahead and you know refocus and look at the injuries, look at the reports and see what the hell's going on. It's it's gonna be interesting. And yes, as Jason is alluding to, we know uh Lou Williams went to a gentleman's club. I actually had chicken wings tonight for dinner because it, apparently it is National Chicken Wings Day. So I was thinking about those Magic City wings. Kevin Harlan was also thinking about those Magic City wings. They look wings. really I good, know. man. Like, I, I, I kind of understand. Those wings look official as official can be. Like People probably just pop off. They're not even for the, the gentleman's club, just strictly for the chicken wings. So now I get it. Now it makes a lot more sense. It does. Um, it does. But still, I, it's pretty crazy. I love chicken wings. So if there is a place to get chicken wings, I'm at least going to try it out. So the next time I'm in Atlanta, you know, I'll make sure to see how far away Magic City uh, Gentlemen's Club is, and I'll make sure to grab some wings. But as we said, Lou Williams is not going to be there. Montrez Harrell is out. Uh, Patrick Beverly is a game time decision. Zion Williams is a game time decision. Anthony Davis is a game time decision. Apparently, LeBron's a game time decision, but I think that's more in name than it actually is. He's playing in actuality. Exactly. He might just go out there by himself and just you know <laughs> Space Jam and just play by himself. Well, Space Jam too, baby. It's coming out. I'm gonna love it. And the the thing about the LeBron one though, I would say if he is at all injured that means his innings or innings here we go i'm back on mlb his minutes will be limited in some capacity now we don't know how many i was on the team that i think he's going out and playing 46 you said no that's a little crazy and i think i'm gonna have to side with you now a little bit but we're here to talk about the nba we're here to talk about the slate we're gonna hop into uh DraftKings, or i'm sorry fanduel here in a second just to make sure that we can give you guys a really good understanding and really just give people a look at, at what we're looking at and what we're understanding especially as we're starting to see a lot of these game time decisions pop up so jason i mean at first glance with all these extra injuries with all these extra reasons that guys can't play how much weirder we knew we had to get weird on a two game slate i mean how much wackier are we gonna have to get to even attempt to try and take down that million dollars you got to lock in a couple of players that, for the most part, even if they don't get the minutes, to still hit the value because there's certain players that are were technically backups who are now going to be starters or playing starters minutes, and they need to get their run. And even if they run for 25 minutes, they'll still exceed value. So guys like Reggie Jackson, Alex Caruso, two point guards that are almost minimum salary, if not minimum salary, depending on the site, FanDuel and DraftKings. You know, so they're for the most part. They're safe players to go with. So you can build around there. And since this tournament is cheap for most people, um, $4 to enter to, for a chance to win a million dollars, the best advice I can give anybody if you're trying to win a million dollars is don't just try to throw in a lottery ticket one time. It's not going to happen. You got to build a couple of variations. So with that, you know, try to balance out your exposure so you get enough exposure to the players you want because the player pool is not that big. It's not that deep. But also assume that there might be a blowout here. You know, the way this Clippers game is going with Montrez out, Lil Williams out, I don't think they're going to go out there and plan and say, okay, we got a short bench today. Let's go ahead and run Kawhi for 40 minutes. I don't think that's going to happen. So I think they're going to pretty much balance it out. I think this game means absolutely nothing to the Clippers, absolutely nothing to the Lakers. They want to put on a quick show. You know, they want to throw some alley-oops up. It's going to be lazy defense. It's kind of – I'm not going to say it's going to be like an all-star game, type of an event, but it's not going to be, you know, this game is game seven of the playoffs right now. The Utah game versus the Pelicans, I think the Pelicans have the most to play for. They can't lose a game. You know, they might be able to lose one, but they can't lose more than like two games to make this run into the eighth seed here. So I think the Pelicans are pretty safe, especially if Zion Williams, Zion is out. You can pretty much feel really safe in Brandon Ingram feel really safe with Derek Favors, Drew Holiday, maybe even Alonzo Ball. 
there's a lot of plays that open up if Zion is out. So that's the first bit of news that I want to see is Zion playing or not, because mm-hmm. the Pelicans are the team I want exposure to because they're the safest team, you know, in regards to playing time because they have to win this game. Utah, not so much. You know, I don't think they have to win this game, but they're in the best environment where this game still means something to them because they're battling those playoff seeds for the Western Conference is so tight there between three and six or three and seven that they can't fall too far behind because they're going to have a tougher matchup potentially. So I think the jazz Pelican game is a game to target. I think this Lakers Clippers game is going to be more of an average of 20, 25 minutes throughout the entire roster. And, and with that in mind, you know, I pulled up the, uh, the jazz Pelicans game here, as you said, if Zion's playing, probably going to want to play them. If not, that really opens up a lot more doors, I guess. To start out, you're trying to build this lineup on FanDuel. As you said, it's four dollars. We're going to have a lot of novices in there. There's going to be a lot of people that are just going to say four bucks to win a million. Shoot, I'll throw in a lineup. I haven't played uh, NBA DFS since March, so there's going to be a lot of people. So there's absolutely an edge to be gained, right? So where do you want to start when building out a lineup here? Understanding you're going to be building, you know, 15, 20, 25 different lineups potentially. The good news is. Um... Last time MLB launched their Million Maker for FanDuel, there was a massive amount of overlay. It almost turned into a 50-50 where if you entered and you beat half the field, you doubled your money or you made a little bit of money, you know, some profit. So I have a feeling this might do the same thing. And then on top of that, with MLB, for the most part, you knew everybody was playing, you know, besides Juan Soto, who was a late scratch, and I guess Clayton Kershaw was a late scratch. So not everybody was known, but it's going to be a lot worse with NBA. So there's people who locked lineups a week ago. There's people who locked lineups Monday, Tuesday, and today, and they're not going to check tomorrow. They're going to forget about it. They're going to think, oh, yeah, these guys are playing. The FanDuel says they're playing, so they're going to be playing, and they're not even going to stay up with the news. So there's going to be a lot of dead lineups, I feel like, too. When it's a $4 contest, there will be some dead lineups that have Zion if he doesn't play, or we'll have Anthony Davis if he doesn't play, or even have players like um, Beverly, who's 50 50, or Montrez Harrell, which is leaning like he's not playing, but it doesn't really say he's not playing yet. So there's certain players that will be there. So as long as you play a lineup right now and there's overlay, basically what overlay is when they have, say, 100,000 entrants and only 50,000 people enter, there's 50,000 entries times, say, $4 of overlay in it. And it's probably going to be a lot more in this, similar to you know the baseball situation that we got into. So it's a pretty safe tournament to enter, which typically it wouldn't be in a large field GPP. You really have to have like a top 10% of lineups. Mm-hmm. But in this case, I think if you play a lineup where everybody is in the game, not injured, you know, going to get some minutes, and then you take some shots. So you make some optimal lineups, and then you make some kind of wacky lineups, lineups that, you know, could go off if there's a blowout. If there's a blowout in L.A. or there's a blowout in, in New Orleans, you know, either one. You got to kind of play for that because there's options for that. Yes, and uh, when you say in LA and you say in New it's Orlando, Orlando, the bubble, yeah, no. in Orlando, we're all in the bubble, baby. So uh, let's let's start it out. I have the uh, cl- I have the Jazz Pelicans game tabbed here. Is this the place where you want to start, or is there a couple is there a couple key guys that you're trying to grab in that LA game first before you fill out the rest of your roster? Now, I like to go position by position because you have to pick two point guards. You have to pick two shooting guards, two small forwards. So you can leave it open, click on the point guard position, and you know we can start with there. The guys that are really safe right now are Reggie Jackson. So like if you're building tonight and you're not going to check your computer tomorrow, Reggie Jackson is going to be running the second team offense with the Clippers. If Patrick Beverly is out, Reggie Jackson will have a monster game. He's probably going to go 10x his value, maybe even higher than that at this price tag. So he's super safe right there. And another guy who's super safe is going to be Alex Caruso. So you have two point guards, minimum salary, that should get a ton of run here. And if you want to come off these guys because they might be higher owned, you can look at a guy like Moutier that might be sneaky. Frank Jackson might be sneaky, but – these are the two safest plays at the point guard position. And I also like Mike Conley. You know, those are the three guys that are going to get the highest ownership on the slate. If Beverly plays, he's in a good spot too because he should run with the first team. He should get 25 minutes and he's pretty cheap. So the guy that I'm not really on in this spot is Lonzo Ball at, at basically $8,000. If Zion is out, he gets a bump. He becomes mm-hmm. more playable for me. But I, I would prefer – some of the the other players on this Pelican squad over Lonzo Ball because Conley 
you know, he plays pretty good defense too. It's not a good matchup for him. So Reggie and Caruso are the safe spots here. And yeah, be paying attention to what happens with Patrick Beverly. And then of course, as Jason said, you're going to have to make a multiple, you're going to have to make some weird and wacky lineups. So don't worry about taking Quinn cook and a couple of them. Let's go Duke. Um, hopping over to shooting guard. Again, we have the whole thing tabbed. It looks like there's going to be a bunch of injuries as well. And we have Lou Williams, who is out chicken wing related. Um, man, if those wings are that good, obviously, we know uh, Avery Bradley's out. It says Contavious Caldwell Pope is a game time decision. We'll see exactly how game time that is. So uh, of here, again, some of those safer plays, some of those plays that you're really looking at to uh, to take home that million dollars. Yeah, so Donovan Mitchell, he'd be the first guy I slid in there. at 7,200. He's going to get a massive usage against the Pelicans and up pace for Utah. So Utah plays kind of slow, and New Orleans plays like a, a track meet. They're running and gunning the entire time. So Donovan Mitchell will do really good in this environment. So Mitchell is in a great spot. Paul George as well at 7,400, great spot as well. So those two guys would be guys I'm looking at. If you slide down a little bit, there is a couple guys here, more than a couple guys here that I'll have in my lineup. Jordan Clarkson, he'll run the second team anytime Donovan Mitchell is off the court. And then even when Mitchell's on the court, they're going to basically be having a ball in their hands. It's going to be, mm-hmm. you know, they're going to just be passing back and forth to each other. Clarkson, a great spot. You know, I like the option of putting Mitchell with Clarkson in the same lineup because that will be a way to kind of have some different type of ownership. Then Danny Green starting shooting guard. Not a sexy you know name that nobody wants to really play, but there will be games he gets three steals, two blocks, and hits some threes, and he'll smash his, his value there too. So Danny Green definitely in play. Now J.J. Redick definitely on DraftKings more in play because you get a bonus for three-pointers. So mm-hmm. I like him there, but I also like him on FanDuel. You know, especially again if Zion is out, he gets a little bit of a bump, but not much. Jr. is in play. KCP, if he plays, I know there's a game time decision tab on him, but I haven't really heard more than that. I think he plays, and there's a very good chance that he finishes the game with the Lakers if they're really trying to win the game and mm-hmm. and you know they're going at it. KCP. Could be the finisher, shooting guard with Danny Green on the court at the same time. So I like KCP as well. If you slide down a little bit more, you know, if Zion is out or this game becomes a blowout, um, Alexander Walker can come out there and score some points. But outside of that, not much else. They, they slid Magruder into the slate. He wasn't even, like, really on mm-hmm. the active roster. Maybe throw some crazy shares in there if this game becomes a blowout again. You know, the Clippers might have a short bench with no Lou Williams, no Montrez, and they might just be throwing random people out there because if it becomes a blowout at all, there's no reason to have Kawhi in. There's no reason to have Paul George in. So this could be a fourth quarter where, look, and also there's a psychological effect of Montrez not being there, Lou Williams doing the dumb shit that he did. Maybe Kawhi's like, listen, man, don't don't try running me out there for more than 20 minutes. I'm chilling Mm -hmm. right now. Wait for the playoffs, and that's when I'll come out to play. And if that's the case, other people are going to have to eat up these minutes, so it might be a guy like Magruder who does it. It could be possible. Again, it's it's going to be weird. It's going to get wacky. Uh, I know our good friend Ghost at DFS underscore Ghost was telling me, maybe this is a rust game for a lot of guys. I know we're watching them play a little preseason or whatever the heck we want to call it right now, but we all know that that's nothing compared to real games. And these games, while... They count much more for certain people than others. I do think this could be a knock off the rust kind of game. So he thought, you know, hey, what if what if LeBron says, JR, go take 25 threes? And it turns out he knocks down 10 of them. That's a pretty monster game, right? So you're going to have to get weird. You're going to have to get wacky and play some of these guys that we really just we just don't know. Yeah, I think for that point, too, I think, you know, not only would be like, you know, you can call it a weird game. I think it would be more of a sloppy game. And when it's mm-hmm. a sloppy game. A guy like Danny Green and a guy like KCP that play defense, especially on FanDuel, you get these these bonus points for steals. You know, a steal is three. A block is three. So technically, somebody goes out there and gets you four steals, it's better than somebody going out there and scoring you 10 points. Yep. Um, so, like I said, KCP plays good defense. Danny Green plays good defense. And these blocks, a guy like Rudy Gobert potentially come in and get you four or five blocks in a sloppy game. He might be interesting as well. So when we get the center position, it's it's a free for all center position. You know, yeah. once we get there, I think LeBron going to small forward position, he's safe. You know, he's definitely in a safe mm-hmm. spot. I think Adam Silver. I think the NBA, Twitter, 
whoever's out there, they want to see this dude play. He's got this revenge narrative going on right now. So he's going to go out there and show up. He'll probably be, you know, the top one or top two scorer of the slate. So, and there's not many people to pay for because there's a lot of good value that opened up on the slate. So I think LeBron is safer than Kawhi for minutes. But if it becomes a blowout again, it's a guy you don't really want in your lineup. So I think Brandon Ingram, especially if Zion is out, even if Zion is in, he becomes sneaky. And Joe Ingles, for price per dollar, is the safest small forward. Because I think, you know, Utah wants to win. They're losing Bogdanovich. He's going to he's gonna be controlling the ball a little bit, running a little bit of a point forward position. So at 5,500, he's pretty safe. But again, if you there's going to be lineups. I'll have LeBron. There's going to be lineups. I have Kawhi because mm-hmm. if they do get full minutes, they're going to show up. They're going to be in a competitive game. Now, if you start going down here, you know Markeith Morris becomes interesting if Anthony Davis is out or Dwight Howard's out. Deion Waiters becomes interesting if it's a an extreme blowout one way or mm-hmm. another. They just want to get this dude run, and he goes out there and starts lighting stuff up. Etwan Moore becomes interesting if Zion's out. Um, a couple of people down here, I never even heard these guys' name, like Brantley, and I'm not even going to pretend to uh, pronounce this other dude's name. I haven't seen them on any slate the entire the entire year of, of NBA. So who knows? Maybe make a couple lines with these dudes. Maybe they're going to get some run if it's a blowout, but I haven't heard these guys' name. But Fondu and, and Brantley, never seen these guys before. No, and uh, the only reason I know Etwan Moore is because he played at Purdue and made it maybe made it kind of deep in a couple NCAA runs. No, Etwan um, Moore can get run, man. He can definitely get run. More of a DraftKings play because he okay. more is a three point shooter. He gets you know minutes in a rotation regardless. But if Zion's out, he might get an extra yeah. couple. He definitely gets the bump. And I guess going with that narrative, I don't know if you saw earlier this week, but uh, the internet was roasting Jared Dudley again, just kind of for no reason, <laughs> saying that Michael Jordan could beat him, which. I wouldn't be surprised. I, would say so. I don't know, man. I I would uh, I'd throw Jared Dudley in a lineup just again for the revenge and the narrative factor, just because we always love that. Nah, over here in daily sports. <laughs> but um, all right, let's pop over to the power forward position. As we already said, Anthony Davis is a legitimate game time decision. Um, LeBron said it was a game time decision, but we'd all know how we think that's going to play out. Zion is a coach's decision. So I'm really curious where the decisions being made i think he is cleared to play in terms of uh you know the quarantine and 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 being uh free of covid which is a good thing it also looks like kyle kuzma is a game time decision as well so we are doing this now but we highly highly suggest that about an hour before lock uh you make sure you go in and see who is playing and who is not playing because that as jason said there's going to be a lot of people that locked their lineup two days ago forget about it and then half their lineup's dead because three or four dudes end up not playing. So um, here in the power forward position, assuming everybody's healthy, Anthony Davis and Zion are great. And, and Kyle Kuzma is a nice play as well. Say they're not healthy though. Where, where are we going from there? Listen, man, if like people were building lineups, people were locked 150 max entered this, it's going to be like the most chaotic two game slate ever because you got a million dollars on the line. People are going to be stressed out. People are going to have 150 lineups and, you know, the, the problem is you want Anthony Davis in your lineup. Like, he was the first guy I wanted to pay up for at 10-4. He's cheaper than LeBron. He's got a great matchup. Nobody can really guard him and in a great spot. And same thing with Zion. It was too cheap, 7,100. Now, I don't know how you build lineups right now, straight up. Like, how do you build a lineup right now not knowing if Anthony Davis or Zion is going to be playing because that changes the entire slate. Like, they're pretty much lock buttons for most of my lineups because the drop off and the position scarcity, like nobody even close to them can put up, even if they don't go bonkers and they don't drop 70, mm-hmm. even if they drop 40 or 50 and yeah, your guy hit value at, at 4,000, you're not going to be able to make up those points in other spots. So Anthony Davis and Zion, if they're playing and they have a full complement of minutes, you play them in most of your lineups. If Zion is out, you can look at Melly, who's a little bit farther down. If Anthony Davis is out, you can look at Kuzma. You can look at Howard. You can look at McGee. Any of their big men are definitely going to have to step up. Mark, you know, Morris is going to have to play some more minutes. Now, Jermichael Green is interesting because if Montrez is out, he'll definitely get more minutes. I like him on DraftKings a little bit more. He still shoots the three. But even on FanDuel at 3,600, makes a lot of sense. If you want to go super deep, Patrick Patterson, you know, maybe goes out there and gets more minutes now too. He can shoot the three, get a couple blocks. You never know there, too. So it's becoming a lot of question marks 
if Anthony Davis is out, if Zion is out, it's going to be even tough to fill out your lineup. You're going to be leaving $2,000, $3,000 in lineups, and don't feel bad about it because there's not really much else to pay for on this slate. You can stuff in, you know, Kawhi and LeBron and Paul George and Mitchell, but, you know, it's going to be – it might be optimal to leave some money there too. So Melly, though, if, if Zion is out, Melly's definitely in play. Jamaica Green's in play uh, with Montrez is out. But, you know, acting as if – how much salary do we have right now left over for this lineup in particular? Let's see. Uh, so yeah, we got a lot. Yeah, so you can go with Zion and um, Anthony Davis probably here and go cheap at center, I would assume. Yeah. yeah. That's probably gonna, the right move on this one. We're just filling this out for fun, um, you know, as if they are uh, out, though. So it's going to be interesting. It's going to get weird. It's going to get wacky, as we said. Just hopping over to center. As you said, I mean, Rudy Gobert, he can get a couple blocks. We know what he's capable of doing there. And the Utah-New Orleans game is going to be paced up because of how fast New Orleans goes. So we're hoping that is a positive effect on the Jazz more than it is a negative effect potentially on the um, the Pelicans. There we go. Uh, who else at center are you looking at now, again, with, with Montrez Harrell being out? And, with and so Zubac, anytime Zubac got like 20 minutes, he would do – you go up there and put up like 20, 25, sometimes 30 points in 20 minutes. He's a younger cat. He's not really an old body. He doesn't really get injured. He's not like fighting anything. So in this matchup, he's probably he becomes the safest play on the slate for center. Like when I was looking at this last week, I said, you know what? I'm going to get some Zubox shares. I'm going to get some Howard, some McGee, some, you know, some Derek Favors, some Rudy Gobert and Montrez. Now Montrez is out. Zubak gets a massive bump, you know, a real, real big bump. He'll go out there and play 30 minutes most likely. You know, as long as he stays out of foul trouble, he's going to be in a smash spot. There's no way he doesn't, you know, reach value in this situation. Outside of there, you want some Gobert shares because especially if Zion's out, there's really not much that can guard him. Mm -hmm. Derek Favor is super safe. He has a revenge narrative going against his whole team. Um, he's had great games against Utah in the past this year. So I like Favors. I like Gobert. I like Zubak. And then there's still question marks with McGee and Howard. So if Howard's out, McGee gets a pretty big bump there too. If Zion is out, you you might see some Jackson Hayes minutes. I don't know. I haven't heard anything about Joakim Noah. I heard he's looked good kind of mm -hmm. in practice. But who knows? They might want to throw him out there for 15, 20 minutes and see what he can do. And the guy is scrappy. He might go out there and get you three or four blocks. It might outplay Dwight Howard and McGee and might be a difference maker. Also, if Zion is out, Okafor could potentially get some minutes too. But I think it's Derek Favors who's safe. I think Zubak becomes the safest. I think Gobert has the highest ceiling. But, you know, at the same time, if, if Howard is out, if Howard's out, McGee gets a bump too. So, you know, with the center position, I would split up a good amount of ownership between Gobert, Favor, Zubak, and then depending on the situation with McGee and Howard, you know, get shares there. If you want to get super crazy, you can play a little bit of Noah, but, you know, I, I got to do more, you know, scouting on how many minutes he might mm -hmm. get with Montrez out. But they never really want to run Zubak for more than 30 minutes. So if, if Noah's the first guy off the bench at, at center – in what is kind of a joke game anyways, where people are all out, he might get you 15, 20 minutes, but I still think Zubox way better play here. Yeah. Yeah. And I think again, it's, it's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, again, it's four bucks to enter. As you said, it's a lottery ticket. Let's be honest, but at least you can put a couple lottery tickets in and you can make some educated decisions on, you know, how to, how to play again. We just quickly made this lineup. It's, Probably, you know, there's a boatload of money. There's still a lot of cash on the table, a lot of stuff that can happen with it. So we'll see what happens there. But that's why uh, that's why we're here, man. We're here. Well, to the help good people. news. The good news is this. There's only two hundred eighty five thousand entries so far. And to fill this thing, they would need in less than 24 hours, six hundred thousand more entries to go. Okay. So my prediction is. If they done 285 now, if they do if they do 300,000 in the next 20 hours, I'd be surprised. They probably won't do that. They'll probably come around 500,000 people, you know, and to cash this thing, you have to be in the top 245,000. So it's pretty much going to turn into a 50-50. 50-50.
So your odds in a typical FanDuel or DraftKings big tournament like this, you have to finish in the top 10, 12%. Now you have to be in the top 50 to cash. So if you got the cash, you know, and you never multi-entered before, this would be the tournament that's pretty safe to multi-enter because, you know, don't quote me on this, but I think it's not going to come close to filling mm-hmm. unless they start doing some crazy things. And I don't think they're going to be running Super Bowl commercials for, you know, for the return of basketball on FanDuel. So, and this is a 6.30 start too. So that means in LA, it's 3.30. People are at work. They can't run home to get into this game. And there's a lot of question marks. Or a lot of people can say, screw it, man. I don't even know if LeBron's playing or Anthony Davis is playing. All these people playing. I don't want to stress out about it. So this would be the, the tournament to, to max enter. If you max enter, you can put in 150 lineups in. You have $4 a lineup, so it's 600 bucks. And there's a very good chance that you make your money back, you double up, and you have a shot at a million dollars too. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to multi-enter. It's going to be stressful though because there's too many question marks, and it's probably going to take up most of my day tomorrow to not only enter these lineups in to get 150 of them built, but then on top of that, you got to be around between like 5.30 and 6.30 to sort out this first game. And then you have to go back to the drawing board around 8 to 8.30, 8.45, and hopefully you get news on all these people. So the good thing about it, we have this Discord chat. We have Twitter. We have you know a 1,000 members that all work together to help everybody out. So we're going to be pulling all this information in overnight and really try to get as much information from the beat reporters, coach talk. We got some friends who you know work with the Clippers as well. So I'm going to reach out to them, see what information I can get from them. They follow the Lakers. They follow the Clippers. They're out in L.A. So if we can see what's going on out there, that's a big, big help. And then with our Discord chat, our expert chat, we got a 1,000 people. We're all trying to win a million dollars tomorrow. So we're all helping each other with news. So if somebody says, hey, we hear that Kawhi is going to play, but he's only going to play 20 minutes, that's a big help. That can make our adjustments, and we can fade him potentially and you know go a different round. And they said, listen, we want to work Paul George and see what he's got. And he's going to be playing 35 minutes. You know, we hit the the, the lock button on Paul George and a lot of our lineups. So minutes is really what you want to look at from now until game time. And that is why we're here. As Jason said, we do have an expert chat. It is a Discord. It's nice and easy to use. It's a lot of fun. And for $20 a month, you get all of our premium articles. You get all of our cheat sheets. You get all of our projection models. All of them made through the data that we receive through our data providers, but then also through our brains and our minds and the algorithms that we have created. We have some incredible models and some people making them. And the Discord chat as well, which is where we're really able to put that stuff together, have open conversations, and figure out all of that stuff together because... We're all trying to take down a million dollars. So make sure to come over to windailysports.com, hang out with us for a little bit, and hey, we'll make you your 20 bucks back pretty quickly. I promise you that. 100%. 100%. Awesome. Well, thank you, everybody, so much. Jason, where can everyone find you on the internet? Uh, Wind Daily Sports, man, on Twitter and pretty much IG. It's Wind Daily. Hit us up at windailysports.com. We got a lot of free content up there, too. So you don't have to even invest the 20 bucks just to kind of give it a try. Check out a trial, hop in Discord for free by just putting your email in there. Not too big a deal. I'm at Michael Raziel one and everybody happy NBA season is back, baby. And I hope you make it a fair. Very-